I always knew I want to be a doctor because I grew up in a family of physicians. And the dream was, of course, to cure cancer. Uh, I remember it very vividly. I ended up at the Weizmann Institute and in the lab of one of the best cancer researchers. Uh, and then actually happened to listen to this uh, lecture by one neuroscience professor and I said, actually, no, I want to try that, the other part. And uh, switched to her lab and that's where I, in the field where I stayed forever, in neuroimmunology, where we're combining the brain and the immune system and how they two interact. I was trained at the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel, and I did my PhD there, a pretty short postdoc, and then I came to the University of Virginia in 2007. Neuroimmunology, even though in 2007 it was not a field you wanted to be in, but I believe that there is something fundamentally important between this interaction of these two systems. So what we discovered is that the brain drainage is happening through lymphatic vasculature. Nothing unique about the brain, therefore, as compared to any other organ. All other organs are being drained by lymphatic vasculature into the lymph nodes. Same happens with the brain. It's just in the brain, because brain is really a very unique organ, the location of the vessels is not within the brain, but in the periphery of the brain. But otherwise, the um, biological uh, drainage from the brain or from the liver is happening through the exact same system. It's a physical connection between the brain and the immune system. So now you can study this connection in many neurological disorders. So suddenly these vessels, which initially were cares, now people realize that they are probably maybe interesting in many other aspects of brain function. All disorders which are having immune component to the brain or component of aggregation of proteins in the brain or this inability of clearance of those proteins, then they should also all hopefully be impacted by, by those vessels. So of course the immediate ones that come to mind is multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's, but there are many others that are involved with that, that protein aggregation accumulation are the underlying mechanism of the disease. Uh, frontal temporal dementia and uh, Parkinson's and many, many others. He had discovered these lymphatic vessels and it was a huge implications on uh, the disease or disorder that my children, both of my kids are suffering from. Psychiatric illness was supposed to be separate from physical illness. Or so when I found that he had discovered them, it was just incredibly exciting. In science, sometimes you know there is a dogma, and everybody agrees to that. People just leave with it because it's not like everybody is studying how immune cells get out of the brain. Most people don't really care about it, but we cared. We saw some cells and some vessels, and we said, "Well, what could this be? There's no blood vessels, so what would it be?" Let's label for lymphatic markers, and people said we were crazy. And yeah, I mean we were crazy, so but we labeled them, you know, and we were right. When I was uh, early in graduate school, Professor Michael Sella, a very, very famous immunologist, he's my scientific grandfather, he told me that the most important work, word in English and science is serendipity, and that success is that serendipitous luck meets a prepared mind. <laughs>